Hello, Anikod here, and today we're going to go through some fast-paced tips. Tip tips. No. Right, okay, let's let's move on. Now, tip number one is turning off your V-Sync. If you don't know what V-Sync is, it helps with screen tearing, but it can lower your FPS. Go into your options, go into your screen, and turn that baby off. The next tip I've got is when you're choosing a server to go on, pick either modded or official and then filter it by ping. The lower the ping, the better. If you've got a high ping, you will notice a lot more lag. Tip number three is hover looting. There's loads of people who I see not doing this and you might as well make the most of it. If you go into controls, scroll down to hover and then assign a key. For example, I'm assigning the left control. And then when you go into the box you want to loot, all you have to do is hold the left control and voila, no more right clicking every bit of loot. Tip number four is streamer mode. And although the name suggests it's not just for streamers. So for example, if you go into options, options again, you can see streamer mode is off. This will show up your name in the top right and to all the other players. However, if you turn streamer mode on, it'll change your name to some random name. This is good if you're streaming as the name suggests or if you want to be a bit of a troller, I'll leave that up to you. The next tip is finding food if you're a new player. A lot of people still struggle with this. If you look for a river on your map and then you go to that river, you will find food there. You'll find lots of corn, lots of pumpkins, and you've also obviously got the fresh water as well. So if you set up relatively close to these rivers, you're going to be laughing for food and drink. While we're on the topic of maps, if you look anywhere on the map and you right click, it will set a pointer down. If you then look at your compass at the top of the map, spin your character around and walk towards it, it'll always take you to that place. No more getting lost on foot walking in circles. So the next one is you can search for specific keywords using the little search box below. For example, if you want a build server to practice your builds, you can just type in build. You can also type in PVE, which is player versus environment, so you don't have to worry about players shooting you and such. And then you can also have PVP, which is obviously a player versus player servers which are obviously a little bit more combat orientated the next one is don't be shy with sleeping bags if you've got a relatively big base put a couple of sleeping bags down inside your base preferably one on each floor there's nothing worse than getting raided and they destroy your one and only sleeping bag and then you have to spawn on a beach miles away to get back to your base what you can also do is put some sleeping bags outside you can even rename them to whatever grid square you're in just have them dotted about relatively far about so you're not too far away from your base. What you can even do if they're really well hidden is pair them up with a satchel hidden close by with maybe a kit or some resources inside so you've never got to worry. So the next tip is quite an old one and if you put a campfire next to where your front door is or the front wall you can see if anyone's door camping you. If you look at your comfort at the bottom right if you're the only person in that vicinity it'll only go up to 50%. If there's someone else at the other side of the wall or next to the door it'll go up over 50% then you know there's someone waiting outside for you. So the next one is barbecues can actually be used as storage. So the big boxes can hold 30. The barbecue with one small box which fits underneath can hold a total of 24. However, you can fit twice as many barbecues in the same area as one large box, which means you're almost doubling your normal capacity for your space. And you can also cook food on them. And you're not putting all your eggs in one basket, so you can still lock the containers underneath the barbecues. And as long as you don't like the cosmetics of it overall is a much better choice. The next one is cooking food so it doesn't burn when you forget about it. This one is probably the most straightforward simple method. If you're cooking on a normal campfire make sure you've got one space for the wood, two spaces for the uncooked meat and then leave two spaces. One for the charcoal and one for the cooked meat and it, they'll keep cooking and cooking until one of the cooked pieces burns and then it'll spit it out and automatically turn your fire off. So you'll still have in this scenario three bits of cooked meat that you can eat and one bit of uncooked that spat out and will probably despawn after a fair bit of time so the next one is when you're building a base make sure you've got the doors especially on your airlock facing the correct way you do want these doors to open into the actual triangle foundation that way if one of them gets blown off or you accidentally leave a door open anyone that hasn't got access to that door won't be able to get through there's also another advantage to this and that's the fact that an open door costs more to destroy than a closed door so in a raid it's not a bad idea to open the door just to waste some more of the resources now another tip is to get on top of people's houses for example if you're raiding or you just want 
of that line of sight. You can use the animals or the vehicles, whatever you can find around you in order to get on top of the roof. The horses are the best because you can find them almost anywhere, ride them right up to the wall and then jump on the back and get on top of the roof. That's really good if you haven't got ladders, for example, researched. So another one is hiding stashes. You can hide them inside rocks. Don't do what I've done here and hide them inside nodes for a simple reason. Someone comes along, harvests the node and then you can't find your stash and there is a possibility they will find your stash as well. There is rocks around the area. Make sure you pay good attention. Even write them down on a piece of paper in front of you so you don't lose them. The next one is how to get rid of turrets stealthily. If you use fire arrows and a compound bow from a range, it is possible to destroy turrets without them shooting at you. They are really quiet as well. It is a good idea to shoot them in such a way that you get the fireball landing underneath the turret. That way, when the fire burns, it burns the turret as well, causing more damage. Quick tip a lot of people forget about is you can actually put storage boxes underneath some of the workbenches and the research table. Saves a lot of space and in my opinion, it looks a little bit better too. So a really good tip is when you're doing research, especially on a level one, make sure you drop some rubbish level one items into the research bench and research them first. It only costs 20 scrap to research these. And when you're spending 75 scrap on a random roll, there is a possibility you're gonna get these blueprints anyway, unless you've already learned them. Learn as many level ones as you can with a research bench and then do the random spins for the rest of them. This next tip is for the new players. Now, time and time again, I see brand new players the first thing they do once they build a base is go out to try and find electrical components to put light into the base use the campfires they're really cheap and they light up a whole room you don't have to worry about electronics right at the beginning of the game use them later on to make your life a little bit more comfortable so when you do find electrical components all you need for the very start is a power source some way to charge your battery like a solar panel and then just the lights don't go worrying about switches and stuff to start with all you have to do is put your way of charging directly into your battery put the power out from your battery into the lights and then when you want to turn the lights on or off all you have to do is get rid of your power output it's very easy to put it back in when you're ready to light up your room again it takes two seconds and it works perfectly until you find a switch so the next one is when you're placing solar panels make sure you put them out the way like on your roof for example remember the game is semi realistic in the sense that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west so if you put one solar solar panel facing north and one solar panel facing south you'll get the best power output throughout the day than facing them any other direction another good tip is set up close to the bandit camp you've got everything you need here including decent protection from raiders or any armed players shops to buy and sell recyclers that you can use while under protection and you also can't be looted here if you do somehow die the next one is gaining access to monuments you don't have to actually learn the monument puzzles it is possible not just on the dome but a couple of others to fly in on mini copters collect the loot and then simply jump back on your copter and fly away it's that simple you do need a little bit of practice there's lots of servers out there modded servers that you can use to practice flying if you're not very good but it's a much quicker way and less risky now in the middle of a raid it is possible to barricade the door when they blow it off so don't be scared to get something out and plonk it down when the door gets blown off it will slow them down a little bit more give a little bit of time for counter raiders to come if you're unable to defend yourself and that could be the difference between fighting them off or losing your base the next one is all weapons have got a set recoil pattern for example the ak is an s shape all you have to do is learn that s so for example when the kick of the weapon move to the right you move to the left and then you know it moves to the right and left for example to keep you aiming laser like there is servers you can practice this on and i would strongly suggest getting lots of practicing before you join a server because rust is more toxic than it ever used to be so i hope you enjoyed the video and the tips there's been some beginner tips some slightly more advanced tips but either way i hope you learned something new if you did enjoy the video feel free to leave a like you can also subscribe to never miss a video. Follow me on social media to see what I'm up to. If there is anything you want me to cover, feel free to leave it in the comments down below and I will get to it. And again, if you've made it this far, let me know you're a legend in the comments down below and thanks for watching.